What's going on everyone? Tanner here and in this one we're going to finally set the blue dream shrimp free into their new home which I'm really excited about. I also want to update you on the betas tank real quick and I'll show you some new critters that I got. First things first, let's get these shrimp into their new home. Of course that's easier said than done though. If you remember from last week's video, I told you that I didn't like the aquarium's current location. I also needed to build the second terrarium shelf. To quickly accommodate both needs, I finally stepped up to the plate and built the second terrarium shelf, which I think turned out great. Before moving it though, I wanted to install the light on the new rack. If you recall, I had it zip tied onto the wire shelf previously, but this time I'll use some sturdier hardware. As such, I made a few measurements, screwed in two hooks, and used chains to hold up the light. In case you're wondering, this is just an LED shop light. It was cheap, it's bright, it does a decent job of growing plants, and overall I think it's a good budget light. My only complaint with it is that while filming, it has a slight LED flicker. Anyways, I'll leave a link to it down in the video description for personal reference. Now onto the aquarium itself. Since it's only 10 gallons, it will be fairly easy to move. Of course we'll start out by unplugging the filter. After that I drained about 5 gallons of clean water into a bucket. I say clean water because the aquarium is fairly clean, and I like to keep some amount of the original water when moving my aquariums if possible. Next, I carefully scraped the front of the glass with a razor blade to remove the biofilm and organics. After doing so, the rest of the water was then drained into a discharge bucket. While doing so, I cleaned up the sand, sucked up any dead plants, and removed everything that I just scraped off the glass. Draining the water in this order allowed me to remove excess organics and keep some of the original water. Since I'm using established water, it's basically like I'm just doing my weekly maintenance and water change. At this point, the aquarium was good to be moved. Before setting it onto the rack though, I put down two sheets of coroplast, which I was using on the previous shelf to help evenly distribute the aquarium's weight. I figured I might as well use them again so that I could determine exactly where I wanted to place the aquariums. I suppose they will also help distribute the weight, but they're really not needed on a shelf like this with a rimmed aquarium. It's also worth mentioning that throughout this process, I've been spraying the plants with a mister so that they didn't dry out. Anyways, let's get the aquarium up and running once more. I placed a dish in the aquarium to minimize disruption from the water, and filled it up with the established tank water. Then I filled the rest up with clean, dechlorinated tap water until the aquarium was completely full. Now we're ready for the shrimp. I'm currently keeping them at room temperature, which is somewhere between 74 and 76 degrees Fahrenheit. The aquarium is exactly the same temperature, so it's not a concern. However, the water parameters of their current setup are slightly more acidic than the new setup, so we're going to drip acclimate. I would have done this anyways though because shrimp are fairly sensitive to abrupt changes in water parameters. To do so, I'm using an airline tube and a valve to slowly dilute the water that they are currently in with tank water. The valve will allow me to control the frequency of the drip and thus the speed at which they are acclimated. I set it up for a very slow drip that took about 2 hours to fill up their bin. I know that sounds like overkill, but slow dilution of water will make for a safe transition into the new aquarium and I don't want to take any chances. After that amount of time, the shrimp were carefully netted and set free into their new home.
By the way, I got these shrimp from LRB Aquatics whenever he came to tour the animal room. I will admit that these are from his B team, but regardless they are still some pretty high quality shrimp. Anyways, I'll leave a link to his channel down in the video description. I'm really happy with how this tank is turning out, and I'm glad to have finally added the shrimp. I may adjust things down the road, and I will add more inhabitants in time, but right now I'm content. Let me know what you think about the progress of this down in the comments. I also want to update you on my beta. I was reading through all of the comments and a few of you dropped the name Casper. I felt like it was a nice name that suited him well, so I went for it. Casper's tank is doing really well since I manually removed the algae, dimmed the light, and added the Amano shrimp. I also turned up the flow slightly, but I didn't mention that in the previous video. After doing so, the shrimp thoroughly cleaned the aquarium in a matter of days, and it looks very clear. From my experience, Amano shrimp are incredible at cleaning up a tank, and they'll keep it clean most of the time as well. Plus, they're super fun to watch. Overall though, I'm really liking the progress of this setup, and I figured I'd do a quick update to tell you that I chose a name. I also wanted to update you on the algae situation, so that you can see how simple and quick it can be to fix it. Of course, the situation will be different for every aquarium and based on the type of algae, but if you can pinpoint and fix the root cause, it's nothing to be afraid of. Understand also that everyone gets algae, it's just a matter of winning the battle against it. Now I want to show you some new fish that I got for the fire-bellied toad paludarium. Yes, you heard me right, fish for this paludarium. For those of you who are observant or who follow me on Instagram, you already know about these. I wanted to do a proper introduction though on here as well. I know I said I didn't want to do this initially, but I figured I owe it to myself and each of you to give it a try. Allow me to explain. For those of you who don't know, fire-bellied toads are poisonous. As such, keeping anything else with them is a risky practice that I didn't want to advocate, but it can be done. Shortly after I released the video on this build, I noticed that snails started to appear. They were breeding and doing well, so I decided to add some Malaysian trumpet snails as well. As time went on, they continued to thrive and reproduce along with the other snails. Although snails are pretty tolerant of various conditions, I got to thinking that it may be possible to keep fish or other critters in here as well. Eventually, I made my way to a local fish store that was selling feeder white cloud mountain minnows for 20 cents a piece. At that price, I figured I'd give it a try, especially since white clouds are well suited for this environment. So I bought a few and gave it a try. Thankfully, it worked out well. The fish seemed to really like this setup based on their behaviors, I haven't seen any casualties, and I think it's difficult for the toads to eat them. However, I have seen them hunting here and there, and I'm sure if the opportunity is right, they will succeed. To address this, I'll get some type of floating plant to provide better coverage for the fish so that this is less of an issue. If you do some research online about keeping fish with fire-bellied toads, you will see mixed results, generally leaning toward favorable outcomes. In my case, I only have three toads and there is a lot of water, so I suspect whatever poison could be in the water is extremely diluted. Regardless, I'll have to monitor this long term and let you know how it turns out. Understand that I'm not advocating this behavior and that if you choose to do the same, do so at your own discretion. Anyways, I'm glad that I got them for this setup because they add a whole new dynamic as well as a lot of life to the water feature. White clouds are peaceful, so they stick to themselves and are an attractive fish. Plus, they have some interesting behaviors and are fun to watch. More on them in a future video though. Expect to see a lot more of the shrimp tank, the betta tank, and the fire-bellied toad paludarium in the future. They're all still progressing and taking shape, so there's much more to come. Also, don't forget about that other aquarium to the right of this one that I'll be setting up very soon. I have something truly unique planned for this one that I know you're going to love. Now that we have both terrarium shelves done, we can also move on to some cool terrarium builds. As always, if you liked the video and haven't done so already, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.